Lesson 7.4c, Using Proportions to Convert Measurements. We can convert measurements by using a table. We learned that in 7.4a. Using a conversion factor, we learned that in 7.4b. In this lesson, we'll learn to convert measurements by using a proportion. So remember that two equal ratios make a proportion. We learned about that in lesson 7.2a and 7.2b. If we have a ratio of 5 centimeters to 2 meters, it's equal to 10 centimeters to 4 meters. We multiply by the same number. We need 2 times 2 to be 4, so we multiply this times 2 to get 10. We multiply or divide by the same number. These two ratios are equal to each other, so they make a proportion. Here we have a multi-step problem. It says Sophia's bedroom measures 10 feet long and 12 feet wide. She plans to install carpeting to cover the entire floor. And the carpeting costs $9 per square meter. What will be the cost of the carpeting to the nearest cent? Well, we look on our chart and see that one foot is approximately 305 thousandths of a meter. And we think, we need to find the area, the length times width of the room, but the data is given in feet, and we need it to be converted to meters. So the very first step, we convert the data to meters first. We have one foot to 0 0.305 meters, and we need to convert it to 10 feet if we're multiplying this 1 times 10, then that means we need to multiply this times 10. We're going to get 3 and 5 hundredths meter. To go to 12 feet, we need to multiply this 1 foot times 12, which means we need to multiply this times 12. And we do a little multiplication on the side, and there are 1, 2, 3 jumps in the equation. So we're going to put 3 jumps into the product, and we get three and 66 hundredths meters. So now we know the length and width in meters. Now we need to find the area, and the area is equal to length times width. So we're going to do the 3.05 times the 3.66. We can do it on the side, and we have one, two, three, four decimal jumps in the equation. So there's going to be four decimal jumps in the product, and we get 11.1630, we know that zero on the right is not necessary, so we get 11 and 163,000 square meter. Now that it's in meters, we can find $9 per square meter. So for step three, we now know Sophia's bedroom is 11 and 163,000 square meters. We know the carpeting is $9 per square meter. We multiply to find the total cost. And our answer is going to be in money, so we have to remember the dollar sign, right? And because it's money, we round the cents to do two decimal place values. And this 7 is going to tell the 6 to go up to a 7. We have $100.47 to carpet Sophia's room. At the beginning of the problem, we saw that Sophia's room was 10 feet long and 12 feet wide. And we just found it would cost $100.47 to carpet her room. How much will it cost per square foot? Now we can use the original amounts, the 10 feet and 12 feet, and we do length times width. 10 times 12 is 120 square feet. We take the total cost and divide it by that 120. Do a little division on the side, and we see that we get 0.837, but because this is money, that seven is gonna tell the three to round up to a four. We're gonna get 84 cents per square foot. Hopefully you remember how to divide using decimals from lesson 5.4. If not, you can go in the playlist and find those videos in chapter 5. I believe it's 5.4. Here it's telling us to convert 300 meters to yards to the nearest tenth. 
looking on our chart, we saw that one yard is approximately 914 thousandths of a meter. So we've got one yard to 0.914 meters, and we need to convert the meters and yards to make a proportion. So what do we multiply this 0.914 by to equal 300? Once we know what we can multiply that by, we can multiply the numerator by the same thing to find out what goes here. And we can solve this with division. So remember, division is the inverse opposite operation of multiplication. If we saw one-third is equal to something twelfths, and we didn't know what to multiply this by, we could do 12 divided by 3, and that would give us that missing factor. We'd know it's a 4. Then we would know to multiply the numerator to 4, and we would know that's a 4. So that's what we're going to do here. We don't know what this factor is that we need to multiply the meters by to equal 300, so we're going to do 300 divided by 0 0.914. And if you remember your decimal division, we move the decimal three jumps to put it back here. One, two, three, which means we need to move it three jumps for the 300. And since it's right here, we're going to go one, two, three. We're going to put some zeros in as placeholders. And we find that we need to add some extra zeros to keep dividing. And we see how many times 914 can fit into 300. It can't, so there's nothing there. How many times can it fit into 3,000? Well, that would be three times. So we put our three above that zero, and we start doing our subtraction, and we do a little multiplication on the side, and we find out that we have 328.22. That's our missing factor, 328.22. That means this is going to be multiplied by 328. 0.22, which means this needs to be multiplied by the same thing, right? 328.22, and it's times 1, so we know that's 328.22. So we've converted the meters to yards. We know it's 328 and 22 hundredths yards, and it wants it to the nearest tenth, so we can take this two away and just say 328 and 2 tenths yards. So now we're finished with module 7. I really hope you understood everything from module 6 and 7 before we move on to module 8 because now we're going to be learning about percents. And the next lesson is split into three parts. And the first one is using a grid to model percents. Percents are parts of 100. I hope you have a nice day, and I hope you'll join me for the next module. Bye.